Some tasty grooves there, Emily. Sounded Thanks. good. Hey everyone. hey everyone, this is Chris Keys for from Rear Guitar. I'm hanging out in Nashville, Tennessee in my humble abode and uh, I'm gladly joined by Emily Wolf who's in Austin, Texas. How are you doing, Emily? I'm doing great, all things considered. Um, yeah, it's, you know, I've been writing and recording and just working at my day job at a music shop, so yeah. Awesome, yeah, so have you, you've filled your time with uh, obviously everyone's in quarantine and dealing with the p pandemic in every way that we're trying to remain sane. Uh, was this part going to be a tour anyway? Is this part of the, the timeline or this part of the, uh, the year, I should say? Or were you planning to be writing anyways? Yeah, I had like a huge tour planned. Um, oh, I was going to go, yeah, I was going to go all the way up the, the East Coast, down the Midwest, and then I had like a West Coast tour planned too. So that was, you know. It's a bummer. I couldn't. I couldn't do it. But it'll come back one day, hopefully soon. It's going to be back. So touring will. Cool. Well, at least it sounds like you've been busy writing for. Uh, it sounds like obviously a new album. So that's cool. Yeah, new album. Yeah, um, still in the works. Still doing demos and stuff like that, and writing writing stuff. But sure am. Sure, I'm doing a new one. Awesome. Is there anything else that's been uh, occupying your time? I mean, you had mentioned you work at a guitar store. Is that something you've been doing for, for a while or just recently? Yeah, I've had that job for about three years, and um, I love it, actually. I get, to, I get to guitar tech, and I get to unbox new stuff like audio interfaces and pedals and um, keyboards and new guitars and everything. So it's just like, it's really fun and it's been distracting me from the fact that i can't tour and that entire part of my life is missing <laughs> so, yeah yeah it's been great actually so cool uh, any other hobbies that you've been uh doing maybe watching extra movies or tv or anything like that or uh, anything else that's going on in your life to fill up the 24 hours that we have to do yeah i've been shooting hoops <laughs> i've been shooting hoops and uh i don't know if you can see this but i put it up today it's my basketball hoop in the corner there. Oh. So. <laughs> Got now, that going. <laughs> were you shoot, now, when you're referring to shooting hoops, I imagine you're shooting on a like, regulation 10-foot hoop, or are you just talking specifically safely in this house? Um, I have been trespassing at a school to shoot regulation hoops. So, <laughs> <laughs> so real hoops. And uh, yeah, it's a blast. I never knew that I could like sports, but I do. Uh, I like basketball. It's great. Awesome. <laughs> Well, yeah. that's a great gig that you can do on your own. You can, you know, obviously shoot hoops in a safe, safe manner. But uh, I'm sure as much as everyone loves to talk hoops, I've been immersing myself <laughs> in the Last Dance Chicago Bulls documentary, as I'm sure all 90s kids have. But we've got to talk gear. Otherwise, I'm going to get <laughs> fired. So let's talk guitar. You yeah. have a Sheraton in your hands, and that's been like your, your main ride for a while. So tell me about how you've gotten that and how it's kind of shaped your sound. Yeah, so this is the first guitar I got that I could afford myself um, as a college student. And uh, as you can see, it's been beaten up and taken on the road. And yeah, this was until I got some of the other ones that I'll show you. But um, until I got those, this one was the only one that I played live uh, throughout the entire set. And uh, yeah, I mean, it means a lot to me, this guitar, because I've written so many songs on it. And it's, I mean, it's completely stock. I've, I haven't modded it in any way, um, but I love the sound. Actually, the only thing that I changed was I took the pit guard off, but that's it. I mean, yeah. it's not hard, so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, what uh, first drew you to the guitar? You know, that's a, you know, uh, Epiphone's a, a brand that kind of welcomes in beginners and mid-level players and people that are, you know, trying to find a, afford a guitar during college. But what has made you really, what gravitated you towards that instrument when you saw it in the wall? So the first time I saw a guitar, um, it was that one in the corner over there. <laughs> That's the very first guitar that I ever had. Um, it's a Harmony kid size guitar that I saw in a Walmart. And I was with my mom and my sister and we turned the aisle and it's like the heavens opened up and I just never seen anything cooler than that. Um, as a five-year-old girl, so I had to play it. I had to buy it. Well, my mom bought it for me, you know, but um, yeah, I, and, and ever since then, I was just in love with guitar, and uh, the next guitar I got was an electric, um, 
which was like a hundred bucks. It was called a slammer hammer, which was a, um, like a, a, like a strap model, but it was for, I guess, beginners. Um, but that is what kind of started me on electric. And, uh, I had other guitars after that, but nothing that really, I guess, inspired me to write music. And so this is the first guitar that really inspired me to write songs. And, um, that I, I mean, that's why I, it means so much to me, I think. And it's been with me for 10 years. So. All right, Emily, aside from price, you know, that's, that's big in a college student's, uh, you know, list of requirements on getting an instrument. But aside from price, what drew you to that guitar when you first saw it in the store? So what drew me to this one was that it's black. Uh, black's my favorite color. And also it's the closest, most affordable thing that um, looked like a, a Lucille because I'm a huge BB King fan. So there was like a, I remember right next to it, there was um, just like a wood finish kind of Sheridan. And I thought about that one. And I was like, man, I don't know. I think I'm digging the black. So um, yeah, I picked this one up because it just reminded me of BB King and I thought I could make some music with it. Killer. And, and so now that you've had the guitar for 10 years or a little over 10 years, what do you really feel it brings to your sound and, and, and kind of what you've shaped around it? And it's probably all started because of that guitar. Yeah. Um, actually, so it's really, it's interesting how much this has affected my live show, this guitar specifically, because um, I use feedback a lot, like the F holes and the high gain that I use for my pedals. I like to use um, feedback and delay and reverb as like a droning um, kind of underlying bed of sound because um, I don't have any keyboards. I don't have any kind of synths or anything like that on stage. It's just guitar, drums and bass and my vocals. So um, I feel like I need that extra little thing. Uh, so I'll show you. But I just kind of, I'll have like that going during, during verses, you know, and I'll let it feed back, um, whatever note it is. And then uh, when the chorus kicks in, I'll just, you know, fall on. So I like to let it ring out um, and play the part of a keyboard if, if I had a keyboard. Um, so, yeah, I mean, uh, with the right pedal, you can make it sound like a sawtooth synth, I guess. So, yeah. <laughs> That's cool. And so almost, it's, from what I'm hearing you explain, is because of the unique or, or the lack of character that these pickups have, it's shaped everything else in your signal chain. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, these... Uh, these pickups are stock and the pots are stock, but um, I don't I don't know if it was intentional or not. But these pots, uh, I I swear, are not 500k pots. Um, I think they're a little less or quite a bit less. But I mean, I think it's great. I love it because I love the dull kind of darkness, and then um, I can I can EQ whatever I need to, and uh, it creates this huge sound. Um, and I love like low mids in, in a mix and, and just, you know, that wall of sound is what I'm looking for. So, uh, yeah, these, these pickups and these pots are killer and they've pretty much shaped every other piece of gear that I've gotten. Uh, cause this was the only guitar that I used like would play live, um, through my, through my whole set for a long time. So awesome. Well, that brings us to an exciting point of this interview is I know looking in the future, people can join the Wolf bandwagon, the Wolf Pack, if they may, and have their own Sheridan approved by Emily. Yeah. Congrats. Thanks. Um, yeah, I'll pull it out. Uh, so I was working with Epiphone, and this, uh, this is my signature prototype that is uh, slated to come out in January of 2021. And it's based on that original Sheridan that I picked up at Guitar Center. And then um, uh, this is like, uh, this is one I, that I designed and um, it's like my dream guitar. I had no idea that th this would happen in my life, um, <laughs> but it's rad, yeah. Um, so it's got diamond F holes, which I've always loved the Trini Lopez model and uh, the Grohl model too. And then it's got a, uh, a master tone knob. So there's only three knobs on the guitar because I can't really, I can't reach that fourth knob down there at all. So I was like, take it off. 
Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, so there's that, and then it's got gold uh, airbrush hardware, and it's, um, I think that's cool because over time, like, sometimes gold hardware can look a little weird after a while, but it's going to age really nice. Um, it's got lightning bolt inlays, which is so killer to me. At the 12th fret, it's got a double lightning bolt, so that's awesome. Um, <laughs> the headstock is quite a bit smaller than the original Sheridan that I've got. It's actually pretty crazy when you look at them side by side how much more exaggerated that original Sheridan headstock is. Um, so I like I like the, the feel of this one. I like that it's balanced. Um, it's not as top heavy as the other one. Uh, yeah. And then, uh, on the back, there's a little, a little wolf, wolf drawing and then my signature, but, uh, on the, the production models, I'm just going to have the wolf photo on there and I'm going to take my signature off cause I think it's a little much. I think, I think I got some, <laughs> uh, I, think I, I think I got a little too, went overboard with that one, but. Um, well, you'll keep that one. You keep that one for yourself and you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. the production ones you won't have to worry about that. Yeah, because, I mean, whenever I pick up an artist's signature guitar, I always kind of hesitate. I'm like, well, now I'm playing somebody else's guitar. So I feel like if my signature is not on there, um, someone who will buy this guitar will feel more connected to it, you know, um, and make it, if it'll feel like their own, hopefully. Uh, what? Yeah, so, yeah. I was, what um, kind of input or say did you have on the pickups because on your original Sheridan those were really important to crafting your sound so how how are these picked out of the batch that I'm sure you heard and got to play yeah um actually so I was looking for <clears throat> pickups that were a little bit clearer than my original Sheridan uh just because I over time um I think they have become a little bit bit duller but uh that's probably just because I've worn it out so much <laughs> um <laughs> I don't know if that happens or not, but anyway, so I was looking for, for some just pro buckers and, uh, in my first prototype, there were, uh, pro buckers two and three, which are high output. Um, and that was just causing like insane feedback live, like, and it wasn't really usable feedback and the interaction of those high output pickups with, uh, the diamond F holes was really causing like some crazy, crazy weird tones. And it was really gnarly. So I talked to the guys at Epiphone and I was like, Hey, can we get, is there like a different thing we can do? Like, and they said, well, let's give you pro buckers one and two because those have a lot more clarity and they're less output. So, uh, and I was like, I was a little hesitant cause I was like, well, don't I want more output? Cause it's more fun. <laughs> and they were like, <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, it worked out great. I love these pickups, and it's it's really clear. It's the clarity is kind of crazy. Um, I love it, but yeah, and it's yeah. One it's, silly question I'll have, and and this is you know we can throw this away, and people will see it and they'll enjoy the question. Be like, right on, Chris. Is <laughs> have you noticed a difference with the f holes versus the diamonds in terms of feedback or tone or sound? Or is yeah, uh huh. I don't know what it is, but the shape, they, the guys at Epiphone did tell me, they were like, hey, the, the diamond F holes causes, it can cause some weird feedback. And I, I was like, oh my God, that's shocking. I had no clue. Uh, but yeah, the feedback was pretty gnarly. But with this pickup configuration, it's, it's like way tame, like more tame and it's, it's not even an issue. So cool. I don't know. It may have just been those pickups that, that was causing the weird feedback and not the F holes, but. Uh, well, who am I? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're a signature Epiphone artist. And, and uh, on that note, let's uh, can we actually hear some of it? Yeah, of course. So of course it was a super gnarly fuzz, but you know, cl <laughs> clean it's. It's really clear. Killer. 
I was trying to think of some like cool tone buzzwords that people throw around, but it just sounds really good. That's all Transparent. I can say. <laughs> Organic. <laughs> okay. uh, but but it, it does sound really good. Thanks. Uh, to not to belabor on this guitar any longer, but congrats again on Thanks. having a signature guitar coming out. But uh, let's talk about, I see a Firebird pe peeking out. Yes, um, let me grab it. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious to figure out uh, how you got to own this, what you dig about it, and maybe where it comes up in a live set or why you dig playing it. Yeah, so I... <laughs> I was at NAM 2019 um, and I was hanging out at the Gibson booth because I had a performance there and I was talking to the CFO about how much I love Firebirds. And he was just like, he was like, well, I'll send you one. And I thought he was kidding. I thought he was, I was like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll send me one. And then he, he sent me one, <laughs> like one showed up. And so I was just like, Oh my God, like what the hell? Like this is nuts and I love it and I can't believe this. So that's how I got this one. Uh, I named it after him, Cesar. This is Cesar. And, uh, that's rad. I know, it's crazy. Um, but yeah, I use, so I use this one mostly with uh, covers just to be flashy. And yeah. um, the flashiest song that I've ever covered is Hot for Teacher by Van Halen uh, because I figured I would just play something wild, like people people won't expect it, so why not? And it was, yeah. you know, it's a challenge, and it's it's super hard to play, but it's so much fun when when you nail it. It's like it's fucking really fun. So did you did you learn how to tap just to play that, or have you I tapped did. before? I really? did learn it. Yeah, it took me it took me a few weeks to get my fingers like really like get the technique going, but I finally got it, and it's like it's fun. I mean. You know, I mean, <laughs> it, took, <laughs> it took me so long. I mean, every single night for like two weeks, I was just like, like the first, you know, first freaking night was just like, <laughs> like this, <laughs> sounded like that for hours. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I did it and it was fun. It's, a, it's one of my favorite things to do live and nobody, nobody sees it coming. So that's, what's fun about it. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, I appreciate that you you went out on a limb and not only covered a song that maybe a lot of people don't cover, uh, but also went out and was willing to learn something new. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's like it's one of those songs that is so fucking rad, but at the same time, it also like objectifies women quite a bit. So I was like, why don't I just cover this? And if I nail it, it's like a big middle finger. And then <laughs> that's it, you know? <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I, I, I wanted to do something challenging and I wanted to um, kind of just pull out something that no one would expect. So that's like kind of where I come from with covers. Like I don't want to just do, you know, something people expect, so. Cool. Well, what else do you think about it uh, tonally? I, I see that they still have humbuckers, but mini humbuckers. So what have you liked about that? Added that to the arsenal. Yeah, so these mini humbuckers, um, the attack is really aggressive on them, uh, which is cool for layering in the studio. And I, I have, I really only have guitars with humbuckers. And so when I get to layer guitars, it's like I need a different flavor. Um, so it's a lot of fun to layer with these mini humbuckers and I mean it's super it's super bright and you know it's just a lot of bite to it um, so I love that about it I love the body shape and I love how long the neck is because I mean this is like the only guitar out of my arsenal that I could play that song on because the, the neck is so long and it's like I can grab onto it and do the tapping and you know yeah. if that's I don't know if that's the right technique or not so but it's <laughs> I can do it so yeah if it works for you who cares yeah who cares <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, all right, let's move along down the line, see what else you got there. Yeah, um, let me pull out um, this Gibson Custom. So I had this made, um, my rep over at Gibson, uh, Cody, shout out to Cody, uh, made this for me. She, she wanted to give me a gift, um, which, I mean, if that's any indication of how they treat artists, it, like, that's incredible. Like, they, they really just want their artists to play their stuff, and it's high quality, and it's, like, killer, and it's, I feel, like, super blessed to be in that family, but... Um, anyway, so this one is a matte black, just traditional 335. Um, it's got aged gold hardware, so it looks like somebody super sweaty has played it, and that's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so, uh, and it's got a P90 in the neck and a regular um, Pro Bucker in the bridge, and then it's got a little special nameplate on it that says Bad Bitch with a couple of lightning bolts, so... That is one of my prize possessions. Um, now, did Cody just go ahead and put that there, or did, <laughs> or did you tell Cody to put that there? I said I wanted it, because I saw my friend Jared James Nichols has his signature guitar that has a badge on it that says Blues Power, and I'm, I'm just like, that's awesome, like a, bad, like a badge, that's so cool, what a cool concept. So I wanted to have something for myself that was just like, what, what weird thing can I put on there that has attitude, and it was bad bitch, so... You know, I thought it'd be, like, kind of funny to have, like, just such an elegant guitar and then that fucking thing right there. So, uh, yeah, I mean, this is it, and it's, like, a lot of fun. I mean, to layer that P, this is the only P90 I have um, out of my all my guitars, so... <laughs> And that compared to the bridge humbucker is like <laughs> it's got a Bigsby too, which is fun. So yeah, yeah, it's rad. Yeah, yeah. Do you have a name for that one? Cody. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. What's up next? What's up next? Um, the last one I've got is actually a new Epiphone 61 SG. Uh, it's the only red guitar that I've ever owned, uh, which to me is, is a little scary, but, you know, it's still <laughs> rad. So, uh, yeah, this one is, it's got a Vibrola. It's got a, the fingerboard is Indian Laurel. And um, I mean, the, this new line is killer because it's inspired by Gibson. And I mean, you really can't tell it's an Epiphone unless you look at the headstock. Like, I mean, especially when you play it because the parts are so high quality. Um, they use just like real pro buckers and um, just really nice wood. And it sounds super clear too, which like, I love so. And also on an SG, I like to pull out a little Queens of the Stone Age kind of tone. Like if you roll, if you if you um, if you hit it on the bridge, and you roll the tone all the way off. So that's with it all the way up. And then all the way down, it's like. So that's a lot of fun on SGs. Um, em Emily, I, th I knew we were going to get off on the right foot just because you're an awesome human. But on <laughs> top of it, you just named draw the Queens of Sony, which happens to be like my favorite band. And you nailed it, which is, you know, that classic cocked wah, real wooly tone. So, oh, man. yeah, good on you. Yeah, it's, man, I love Queens of Stone Age. Love them. Um, they're one of my favorite bands ever, so yeah. Um, do, you have a f do you have a favorite record of yours? Of theirs, I should say? Ooh, um, Era Vulgaris. Ooh. 
Yeah, that's it's a good awesome. one. That one, yeah. Uh, rated R is awesome. I can't really pick just one. I mean, actually, you know what? Songs for the Deaf wins it all, I think. Yeah, it's pretty great, especially because you got Dave Grohl drumming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's awesome. I mean, it's crazy good. So, yeah. Um, well, back to the task at hand. Let's talk gear. Is there a name for this one yet? There's not a name for this one, actually. Maybe, what should I name it? Red. Friggin' Red. There you go. Big Red. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Big red. Well, how about you go ahead and get your, how about you get your new signature out? Yeah. And, and we'll start talking amps and pedals. And I see you have an amp behind you yeah. that's taped up. <laughs> and then there's two, two, well, there's one microphone that's plugged into it or right. plugged into against it, but there's another one that's taped to it. So yeah. first talk to me about the amp and then we'll get into the mics. Yeah, so this is a Fender Concert Reverb amp. I got it on Craigslist um, because I was looking for an amp that had wheels on it because I live in Austin, so I play South by Southwest like every year and it just gets, it gets exhausting um, carrying gear. So I was like, I need something to roll that's big, that sounds good. So my main goal was to find an amp that had wheels. And this one was huge uh, compared to the Vibrolux I used to have. Um, it's a 410, 50 watt um, configuration and it's, it's an open back cab and um, it just sounds really full. I love open back cabs and I love 410 speakers because there's so much punch. And um, it just became one of those things. I mean, it's like the guitar, it's like my original Sheridan. It's, I mean, it's just a piece of gear that has like shaped my entire sound and really just everything. I mean, songwriting, everything. So, yeah, it's... How um, did you get to own it? How did I get to own it? Um, I bought it off Craigslist. Uh, this guy, this guy was selling it in his shed. I went to his shed and <laughs> I got there and I was like, this is... This is a lot like some um, Dateline shit that I've seen. But you know what? I got the amp and I got out of there. So uh, it was great. I mean, <laughs> it's a win. Um, probably should have taken a buddy, but it's okay. Um, yeah. You know, and I used you to You live take and you learn. What's that? I said you live and you learn. You live and you learn and you get an amp. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I used to take this one on the road all the time and then I found out that it's actually really rare like they apparently only made these like for three years in the early 2000s so i ended up getting a fender deville that had a free road case with it which i got on craigslist um so i was like man 500 bucks for a deville and a road case is like the best deal ever so i got the deville and i've been taking that on the road which is also a 410 um but i've been leaving this one at home because it just sounds amazing and i don't want to mess it up so, yeah. Cool. Well, talk to me about the mics. I see if it's 57, so that's, you know, everyone knows what that is. But yeah. the one on my left seems quite different. So talk to me about that. Yeah, so I love a 57 on um, guitar cabs. It's just so classic to me. Like right in the center of the cone there is a sweet spot for me. And then the other mic I actually made um, out of a speaker uh, I started doing that because I've just, I don't know, I've always loved tinkering. So, like, I had this really shitty Urban Outfitters um, record player, and it had two little speakers in it that sounded super bad. So, I just decided to take it completely apart and use those speakers to make mics. And so, this is one of those. And um, it sounds really cool, It's especially if you layer it in like in a recording or something like i'll show you how different they yeah. are yeah 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 let, let's see, let's hear them okay so here's the 57 here is that little small mic Fifty-seven. Pretty crazy, but it's fun, yeah. you know. That sounds. Speaking of Sto Queens of Stones, it sounds like the beginning of like, like maybe something mm, like Millionaire or something. It yeah, sounds, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it sounds good. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> yeah, I mean that mic's been on every 
every record pretty much that I've put out. Um, at least the last few songs and then the last one I did in 2019 is it's all over that one. So it's cool. Are there, are there any other mics that you have made and applied in musically? There is one that I made out of, I took apart a Fender Frontman, um, like a little just practice amp and the speakers, I think it's a 15, no, not a 15, it's a 10 or something. And I made a mic out of that and it's kind of sounds like a sub kick mic almost. It's just really just kind of unusable, but it was fun to make. And you know, if, if I ever need a sub kick that sounds weird, that's the one. So. You got it covered. Yeah, I got it covered. And uh, is there anything else you like solder or tinker or anything that like you love tweaking uh, uh, with your gear? Yeah, um, I love to make cables. I love to solder because um, it's really relaxing and it's just like, I don't know, it's just something that I like. It's like uh, crossword puzzles or, or something to me. But mm -hmm. yeah, I, may, I make my own cables um, and I still have a lot of the cables that I made myself on my board still, but I've started using um, Evidence Audio SIS solderless cables and those are pretty indestructible. Um, I love them because the copper core screws into the plug and it's like you cannot damage it. It's, it's, there's like no way for it to break because the, the connection is so solid. So I use that and I use some of the ones I made. And then um, other than that, though, like cable cables wise, I've I've been using divine noise cables for leads like to my board and out of my board, my amp. I use divine noise stuff. I've had those for like three years and they haven't broken. So that's amazing. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. What about uh, any soldering in the, in the pedal domain? Not yet. I want to make pedals because that would be, that'd be the, the coolest thing. I think people who make pedals are so fascinating and just, I mean, it's amazing. It's so cool. Like you make something electronic that just is, just causes creativity. Like it just brings creativity out of people. I think that's so amazing. Um, it's, it, it's weird to me, and maybe you can echo this or completely tell me I'm an idiot, but it, the people that I've met that make pedals, it's like they're a little bit weird, and I'm drawn to that, and it's almost seen and felt in their pedals almost more than any other type of subsect within the music MI, you know, guitar builders or amp builders. It's like pedal builders are weird dudes, but they come up with the craziest stuff that everyone just loves and maybe it's just because of the pedal renaissance that's happening yeah but i don't know what it is it's almost like people who make pedals and sell them i feel like are part of this like illuminati that just like they don't really understand that they are shaping like music right now so it's it's amazing to me that they do that it's so cool and um what a movement to create you know, that's like, yeah. so when I, when I was at NAMM, I was going up to pedal booths being like, oh my God, like, I love your stuff. I am just, I love pedals and you're just so amazing to me. And they're like, who are you? Like, what? <laughs> like, they have no clue. <laughs> they have no clue how amazing that is to me. But um, yeah, my bass player got me a build your own clone uh, TS9 pedal for my birthday that happened recently. Um, so I'm going to dive in. We'll see what happens. Um, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if that. Man. Yeah. <laughs> be cool and with all this free time on your hands who knows maybe you start out with your own pedal line are you weird enough to make your own pedals I, probably i mean <laughs> i think so actually <laughs> well before we move actually into your pedal board now emily I, I have mistaken myself as a good journalist and i forgot to ask you um about strings and picks strings what are you using yeah so i use ernie ball uh 10 to 46 slinky cobalt strings I love those strings because they last a long time and the, the attack on them, I just love that scratchy attack that I get in conjunction with the picks I use, which are Tortex Jazz 3s. Um, I really dig how small they are because I have small hands, so they don't like feel bulky. They're just like kind of a part of my hand. But I use 88 gauge Jazz Tortex 3s. They gotta be black though. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, of course, everything else except uh, Big Red's black <laughs> in your arsenal, so it makes sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so let's talk to me. Talk to me about your pedal board and uh, what you got going on down there. Yeah, um, <clears throat> my pedal board is 
Let's see. So it's a, actually a Gator Aluminum Large pedal board. And it, all the pedals run on a True Tone CS12 Pro uh, power supply, which I love that power supply because it is, it's universal. It's, um, so when you go overseas, like you just flip a switch, get the right plug, and you're good to go. Whereas others, it's like I've had, they've been marketed as universal, but they're not. So it's like, yeah, CS12 is my favorite po power supply. Um, and then I've got... I've got several pedals. Emily, so talk to me about your signal flow after you've talked to me about the Gator board and this power supply. How is everything routed? So it's routed, um, well, I have a, a switcher um, that all my gain pedals go into, but I'll, I'll get to that after I talk about the chain. But first in my chain is a TC Polytune Mini that I have put black electrical tape on. <laughs> um, and then I go straight from there into my switcher, which it's a uh, Flex Reaction Compound 55 switcher. And I love this switcher because it's based on dip switches and it doesn't have like presets based on lights or light colors, which to me, like, I mean, that overwhelms me and freaks me out. Um, and I like to see exactly what's in there, uh, what's in, in each preset. So yeah, um, I love this switcher. Um, so all of my gain pedals are, in the switcher and then I have my modulation outside of the switcher so basically first in the chain of my switcher is the Earthquaker device's tentacle and um, that pedal is basically like an octa fuzz but it's just the octa and there's no fuzz um, and it's can we hear that yeah of course as you're going through the signal let's hear everything yeah, yeah. So this is the tentacle by itself. So that's a little bit weird, but if you pair it with um, like a game pedal, like for instance, the OCD is is like the center of my board. That's what everything is based upon. So uh, yeah, it, before an OCD, it sounds like. by itself and then with it yeah so that's a fun little trick um yeah why do you like combining the two pedals rather than just having an octave fuzz or an octave distortion like that well so i used to use an octave fuzz um and I think it's because I love the feel of the OCD. I love how like solid it feels and it's really, um, you can hear every note in it, but it's really fat. So I couldn't find a fuzz with that same feel. Um, so I was like, why don't I try to turn this into a fuzz? Um, so I put the tentacle in front of it and that kind of makes it sound like a fuzz, but it still has that feel of the OCD. But I boost the OCD um, with a full tone 2B boost, which I used to um, layer, I used to stack two OCDs, but that kind of got oh, unwieldy. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it got a little, to be a little bit too much, but yeah, so I, I switched that for the, the 2B boost. Um, so all of that together, I mean, boosting the OCD with the 2B and then putting the tentacle in front of both of those things is like gnarly to me. Maybe you throw a delay on. Yeah, that's really fun. So. Man, is that is that what people probably hear in like uh, song um, "Violent Veins"? Yeah, I use that's pretty much the go-to like solo tone. So on the sol on solos, that's that's generally the preset that I hit. Um, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So then, what comes after? So so far, we got we got the tentacle, we got the two B boost hitting the OCD. So what comes after the OCD? After the OCD is a sub and up by TC Electronics. Um, it's the best tracking octave pedal that I've ever had or played. Um, I'll show it to you. But I use it just for the lower octave. Um, so one second.
Um, so yeah, this is this is how I use it. Just. <laughs> It just tracks really clean, and it, um, I know it sounds huge. Yeah, it's big. It feels, yeah, yeah. and it, it's fun to kick in, kick in on a solo with that because you know people don't really expect that low octave to slap them in the face. So that's fun. Is there any specific spot that you have kind of pinpointed that in a set or a song, or is that kind of more of a feel thing? You just kick that out one when you go for it. Yeah, it's more kind of like whenever I'm feeling it. There is a song called heat of the moment that i use it on pretty much the whole time like um during the solo <laughs> so yeah when i when i wrote that one i was just looking for a an octave that would track really well and i went through a bunch of different ones and this one was the best one so cool yeah Awesome. And, and while I got you, the thing that like first put you on my radar was Atta Blues. Oh, thanks. And there's some gnarly, gnarly tones in that, uh, specifically in the solo and the second musical break. What are you doing there? Or is that just more kind of your standard uh, solo tone recipe? Yeah, I actually did that recording before, um, before I really dove into pedals. So I think... As far as tone on the solo with that one, I feel like it was a Marshall, actually. But the OCD, like, I mean, it sounds like a Marshall, so. Um, yeah. So, I mean, that's pretty much, you know, same thing, pretty much, but. Um, yeah, so. Cool. Yeah, that was one of the first things when I was, I heard it. I don't know how it came up in a shuffle or something. I'm like, maybe it was like after a YouTube video or something. I'm like, it's one of those things where you hear it, and it was like in a different tab or it was minimized and I had to like go check. I'm like, wait a second, what is that? And that's <laughs> kind of the happenstance of how I got to meet virtually Emily Wolf, just like I'm meeting you now. That's awesome. <laughs> Dang. Rad. Yeah. The magic of shuffle. Yes. That rules. Yeah. So uh, for me to fan and girl out, <laughs> fanboy out, is uh, what's going on next in your pedal board? Okay, so next I've got the Keeley 30 millisecond double tracker, which I use um, to to kind of add another signal in there. Um, and I'll I'll max out the level so you can really hear it, but it's more of a feel thing for me. Like um, here, I'll give you an example. So I'll it's after the gain, so I'm basically double tracking the gain. Um, so you can kind of hear that like double track slight chorus effect there's without it and with it yeah so that's cool um, it's got you can affect the timing and the tuning of the actual double tracked signal oh, wow. and it's got like a built-in reverb if you want to use that uh, but I don't I don't use the reverb on that I have a Flint Strymon Flint pedal that I love the reverb on um, I use this 70s and yeah so that's a I love that reverb and then on the other side, I've got like a maxed out kind of stutter tremolo. So I've got the speed and the intensity all the way up on the 65 photo setting. So I like to start shows that way and then kind of kick that on Dang. randomly. Yeah. Is that what you're using uh, within Hazy Days? Yeah, 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 during the solo. Um, yeah, I'll throw that stutter on there, so. It's one of my favorites. Yeah, that's great. Thanks. <laughs> it's not subtle. That people will definitely know it's on. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I think the reason I love tremolo is just because it like takes you out of the moment, like you know, especially the stutter thing. It like takes you in and out so quickly. So that's why I love tremolo. Yeah. It's just like a startling kind of thing that is cool. 
Yeah. yeah. Well, right on. What else you got on the board? Yeah, so um, out of the switcher, um, I go into a Klon KTR uh, because that pedal, I mean, when I got this pedal, it's it sounded like somebody took a blanket off of my amp because it just adds so much clarity. Um, and so I use it for, for clarity, but also as kind of a limiter because it's at the end of my gain chain. And uh, <laughs> 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 the end of my gain chain. And so if, if the sound engineer at a show is like, hey, you're way too loud, can you please turn down? Like, I'll just use that master knob as a limiter and uh, it won't affect the tone of my board or, or what's coming out of my amp because I don't have to mess with knobs on the amp. Um, and then after that, I've got an MXR six band EQ, which is, it's been on there for years. I've, I've never really liked any other EQs, but um, yeah, here's with it on and then off. So I can really stick out of a mix with it, which is important to me because it's like my bass player's sound is so huge and it covers so much ground frequency wise. So um, he's got like, he's got all the low and low mids and lows covered. And then if I've got the, the, uh, the high mids and highs, it's like a sandwich of tone. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. What do you, how do you, um, cause I know that EQ pedal is like a, a slider, has sliders on it. So how, what are you doing in, in terms of like boosting your mids? Uh, what frequencies are you pushing? Um, so I'm taking out a little bit of the hundred Hertz, not a lot. Cause I still want there to be body in the tone. Um, but then I boost 800 and 1.6 K is, uh, kind of like a, looks like a little mountain. So, <laughs> you know, <it's> like <laughs> And I assume both the Klon and the EQ pedal are always on. Always on, whole set, yeah. Cool. And what else do you got? I uh, imagine maybe a delay? Yes, I've been using the Boss DD500, um, which is great because you can do three presets with it. Um, so I've got a slap, like a longer slap, and a super long slap. Uh, so on like something like Holy Roller, like the solo will be. Um, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much how I use it. I'm just kind of like alternating between those three delay set um, presets throughout the set. Have you, it's a pretty expansive kind of deep pedal. Have you really messed with it or have you just keep it scratch the surface with those three delays? <laughs> You know, whenever I get a pedal with menus, I have to just take a day or two and like <clears throat> learn everything about it because if I don't, I'll, it'll bother me and I'll feel very unprepared. So, and I did play a show with this pedal before doing that <laughs> and there's 99 banks of delays. So, <laughs> um, I didn't realize that you could put put you know oh there's just one bank you can do that so i was just going through you know bank 14 preset c like just the whole set and it was a mess so yes i've i've dove in pretty intensely to this pedal and it's super rad i mean there's so much you can do with it so I'll, it'll probably be on there for a while um but yeah there's there's that delay that's that's my delay um there's all these different settings. It's like pretty much every boss delay in one pedal, which is cool. So, yeah, yeah. right on. Is there <laughs> anything else you got on your board, or is that it? Is that go through the mix? That's pretty much it. I mean, I've gone through like so many different pedals. I've and, and there's a place in town in Austin, which I feel like Austin's really lucky to have, but it's called Rock and Roll Rentals. And they've got this like monthly thing where you can go and swap pedals and it's like you don't have to buy them because I mean, I went through the whole thing where it's like I buy all these pedals, sell all the pedals to pay rent, you know, <laughs> like go through that like <laughs> process. But I mean, you can just rent them there. And I, so I've been I've just rented so many different pedals and swapped so many and tried them all pretty much. And these are the pedals that I landed on. And that's been my board for a couple of years, which is crazy because they used to change just all the time but 
And, and through that process of renting and trying out pedals and then taking them back, have you ever actually found one that you're like, oh, I got to have it, and you bought it? Yes. Um, the Tentacle. I bought the Tentacle from there. Um, oh, cool. Yeah, because it's like a version one, and it's like smaller, so it fits like right in the slot, you know? So it's good stuff. Um, <laughs> yeah. And while you, you mentioned uh, versions, I, I think there's a couple versions of the OCD pedal. Which one do you have? So on my board right now, I've got the, ver I think it's a version two, um, black OCD that came from, with a, a Chicago Music Exchange did like a black OCD thing. And like I saw it on Instagram and I was like, I have to buy this because it's black. Um, and it's my favorite pedal. <laughs> so I did. And uh, yeah, I have a version one that was on my board for a long time, which I colored black. Um, and yeah, I mean, there's like, it's weird because you can kind of tell a difference like the it's almost like a, a, a slight volume difference kind of but it, I mean it feels the same it sounds killer I, I mean I love both versions I love every version of the OCD um yeah it's like my ride or die pedal <laughs> you're OCD, OCD about the OCD I am <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, obviously everything's kind of up in the air right now, but what else do you have planned for 2020? Uh, anything that you can really share with people that keep, keep tabs on you? Yeah, 2020. Um, you know, I don't know. I mean, I'm hoping that touring comes back. At the moment, there's some, some shows in the works in September. I don't know if they'll happen. I hope they do because I miss playing live so bad. Um, but other than that, just writing and I'm doing doing demos, passing files back and forth with uh, a queen of the Stone Age. So that's fun. Wow. Yeah, that's one awesome. queen of the Stone Age. Um, and so, yeah, he's, he's going to produce the next record. And so we're still working on that. Um, but, yeah, I mean, other than that, I mean, this year, I guess, just waiting. Are you, so. <laughs> have you have you done any gigs live like in, from your house or have you done any live streams or anything to kind of keep you active with the fans in that way? I have done live streams. Yes, they're incredibly weird for me, but I mean, I think I think I Why is that? It's just, you know, I mean, I'm just so used to playing in front of crowds, so it's like when I finish a song, I just don't know what to do. It's like, well, there's that yeah. song. Okay, next one. Like it's a little bit weird, you know. <laughs> um but, you know, I think it's important to to bring music to people and during all this it's you know nobody really wants to be in this situation so if i can if i can yeah. help in any way it's i i guess with music so well you've helped us plenty by hanging out talking gear helping me kill some time throughout our pretty boring days where everyone's staying home but thank you again for joining me in nashville from your home in austin i, I really appreciate it Emily. oh man thanks for having me I'm stoked. My stoke tank is full. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad to leave you with a full tank of stokeness. And on that note, I'm going to say I have a full tank of stokeness and I'm out of here. Bye. See you guys later.